This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. So I have for you something that came across my desk, and it was unusual that I have, and I haven't seen anybody report on this. There is a priest in Italy who has, for the last couple of years, been a, a bit of a rabble rouser. He's been a thorn in the side of the now gone Italian government. He has led a lot of the, um, we'll say, lay and civilian um, movements against the solution to the 2020 problem, we'll call it, that the Italian state was all in on. And I mean all in on. He was a very prominent voice there. So he's a bit of a rabble rouser. I like him. <laughs> Just knowing that much about him is that I know. Well, over at uh, Marco Tosati's website, he's an Italian journalist, an independent Italian journalist. Over at his website, Stilium Cure, he published a letter written by this priest to Francis, asking him some really hard-hitting questions, including whether he is a, um, what we call around here, a stone cutter. Don't know what that is. If you can't figure out what a stone cutter is, ask in the comments. I or someone else will let you know. He asks him a whole bunch of hard-hitting questions, and he demands that he resign. This is an Italian priest, and he signed his name to this. Now, if you don't know, the uh, Francis, presumably, as pontiff, is not only the patriarch of the West and the supreme pontiff and the vicar of Christ, he's also the bishop of Rome. It's like the head of the Italian bishop's conference, meaning this priest basically just uh, told his boss, who can immediately fire him, reduce him to the lay state if he so wishes, to resign. And he did so publicly. I've seen no notice since this letter came out on the 31st of December, so more than two weeks ago. No notice that he has had any consequences for this letter as of yet. We shall see. I will tell you, however, though, that I do expect that at some point something will happen to him. But I have for you here the full text of it. It's only available in Italian, but I ran it through the best translating algorithm on the web but some of the syntax is still a little clunky but it's easily understandable it does not need a whole lot of explanation so i will let the priest speak for himself and I will, the only thing i'm going to change here anytime he uses words that our hosts and all their fairness and everything else would object to because of course words have power and words can hurt, hurt people's feelings so we're gonna you know be careful with some of the language used here but otherwise <laughs> this letter is incredible so without further Without anything further from me on this until the end, there's a letter of Father Pellegrini, Floriano Pellegrini, Italian rabble-rousing priest, guy I like him a lot just from what I know of him, to Francis, dated the 31st of December, 2022. Dear brother Jorge Mario Bergoglio, it has been at least a year since I wished to write to you to kindly invite you to step aside and relieve the Holy Catholic Church of the grave sorrow you cause her. This morning, therefore, I decided to do so. Although in the meantime, expected but still unforeseen, the painful news of the death of Benedict the Sixteenth, whose successor you declare yourself to be, with the name of Francis I, has also reached me. I am a 66-year-old mountain priest to whom diocesan bishops have always tried, and still try to, to, quote, put a spoke in the wheel. For the simple reason that I do not follow the hypocritical and according to some Jesuitical principle of always obeying in the external forum, except then doing what one wants and without scruples of conscience in the internal forum, as long as it is kept secret. This was the morality I was taught in the seminary of, Bo of Bayunio in the years 1970 to 1980. Morality to which, however, I did not submit, and that is why, although I worked no less than others, I was always kept on the sidelines. Yet for the same reason, I am loved by many of the faithful, men and women, young and old, who ask me for constant and increasing spiritual direction. I became the repository of confidences, and not only of venerable priests, and I was the privileged one, still a seminarian to whom Cardinal Albino Luciani, recently beatified, addressed one of his last letters before entering conclave, Harmony of Souls. I am sorry to hear from the media of your health difficulties and to see from the same that they are becoming more pronounced, forcing you into a wheelchair. I admire the fortitude with which you try to cope with them, and it saddens me when I observe in the tension in your face and at times in the ill-concealed Ill -conceal nervous tension in your demeanor 
that you are not succeeding. I pray, therefore, for you. But please withdraw. The reasons why you should feel compelled to do so are far greater than health problems, which also, as you have acknowledged and declared, might make your Petrine service less suitable. No, no, these are other issues, unresolved and of essential importance, which I believe it is my duty to expose to you with the benevolent spirit of a brother and with the precision of a confessor. Then you will evaluate in conscience and before God whether it is honest and proper to take them into account, or on the contrary, it is honest and licit to disregard them. 1. A great many of the faithful from all parts of the world, including theologians and jurists, are uncertain about the validity of Benedict XVI's resignation, whereby they have held and will always hold that he was the last pope and you are an intruder and boaster. Now, while I am not in position to evaluate such a conviction, and in any case have always held, albeit with some questioning, your elevation to be valid, for the very fact that such doubt exists, it seems to me that a powerful diminutio of your human and priestly credibility is being posed. You can pretend that you do not know that there are such questions propagated continuously and in major languages by various books and countless articles about the validity of your elevation. But does it make sense? Two, to compound the above doubt, based on the highlighting of the substantive inconsistencies noted in Benedict XVI's Declaratio of February 11th, 2013, in particular noting that he was renouncing, yes, ad ministeria, but not the munis, was then added in 2015 by the biography of Cardinal Godfrey de Niels, when he himself authorized. During the presentation of, of which, on the 29th of September, as it appears from videos on the internet, he had the unfortunate idea of revealing the existence of an unknown St. Gallen group, which he called dignified or respectable but then believing he was being ironic and instead causing great scandal added, but actually we said about ourselves and that group. And then he used the word that our hosts don't like for a organization of people who act against the law. I do not think it is to give undue importance to this group of bishops and cardinals, but neither is it possible for you or me to ignore Daniel's statement, especially since it is now certain even Wikipedia has an entry for the St. Gallen group that this group was blatantly hostile to Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, or rather, to his ecclesiology. So what? But were the pressure against Ratzinger, in the meantime, elevated Pope, and the agreement in your favor also true, and while knowing of the provision of Article 81 of the Apostolic Constitution, University Dominici Gregis, perhaps, I say perhaps, I would not have come to speak to you as I do, that is, to ask you expressly and publicly to retire to private life. Three. If I do so, it is because I have observed in your magisterium, oral and written, something abnormal, almost schizophrenic, as if you had a double personality, or at any rate, unresolved personality disorders, which are unpleasant in everyone, but all the more so in those who exercise, legitimate or illegitimately, a public office, even more so if a pastoral and spiritual leadership office. There are times when you speak beautifully, with great human sensitivity, gentleness, knowledge of the problems, even with the traits of poetry, and there are other times when you speak strangely ambiguously, paradoxically. Oh, that you are worth little as a teacher of faith, that much is evident. Sometimes you don't even seem to have faith, and it seems that you are only interested in the earthly horizon, so that almost disguising yourself behind the role you exercise, you make quotations from Christ, from the saints, from Holy Scripture, but you seem to feel estranged in all that. It seems that in doing so, you are following a cultural pattern to which you are bound, not a deep conviction. All of this is very unpleasant, your superficiality, your theological papiocalism, your cultural horizon stubbornly fixed on certain truth, untouchable to you, make us uncomfortable. It is unpleasant to make the comparison. It may offend you, I imagine, but how can we not see the gulf that separates you, as a teacher of faith and Christian life, from Benedict XVI, from a John Paul II? On some points, then, you have certainly gone astray. Here are, here are some of them. Four. Your vision of universal fraternity is not the Christian one, but the stonecutter one. You know much better than I do that we Christians call ourselves brothers insofar as we are baptized, not insofar as we are members of the so-called human family. The church has always taught us, and you should too, and instead you do not, that we are brothers by grace and not by nature. Are you perhaps a stonecutter? Are you sympathetic to the stonecutter ideology? You have denied the true doctrine whereby those who adhere to these to stone cuttery are in grave sin. And if not, why do you continually repeat thoughts of the stone cutters passing them off as Christian thought? Five, 
your ecumenical vision is off-road. Quite rightly, many scandalized believers wonder why you continue to hang out with members of other groups with an itch and with statements that leave one dumbfounded. You should not have asserted as you did that all religions are a blessing from God. You should not and have not and should not have stood by side by side with members of other groups. You should and should have reiterated, if you are Pope, that extra ecclesium nulla salus. Outside the church, there is no salvation. Instead, you did not and stubbornly do not want to. On the contrary, while you push for so-called dialogue at all costs with a stern and reprehensible attitude, you forbid the faithful who love the Tridentine liturgy to continue celebrating it. But how dare you be the master of other people's spiritual lives? So, utmost respect, according to you, for atheists, agnostics, various Eastern groups, and leaders of secular groups, but you give a hard punch with traditional Catholics. But don't you realize that you have given signs or at least induced strong doubts about your personal, even before priestly balance? Six. Lastly, but I could say it's much more, even in the three years of the phantom chastisement, your attitude has been one of supreme scandal, of total submission to the instruction, instructions of the exponents of the big companies that manufacture these things and collaborating governments of the, uh, of the attempt to establish a new ruling system, an order that is decidedly free, uh, decidedly stonecutter, elitist, pro-human uh, augmentation, and of a declared satanic inspiration. How could you have sunk into the abyss by declaring so the so-called solution to the 2020 problem morally permissible, indeed morally due? Brother, you have done it big. You have taught evil and induced evil. For this one sin of yours against humanity, for which you have never asked forgiveness, you should retire. It is the general condition of the church that prompts me to speak to you like this. It is suffering. The church, we learn to love her from our earliest age and to feel respect and honor her as our spiritual mother. And from our own earthly mother, she was pointed out to us as the most precious treasure we have in life. As in the open tabernacle, and at one with the closed tabernacle present in the churches. As the bloody Christ, dead and risen, living in time his mystical body, the life of souls. O oh, the church from whom we have desired all good and in whose service we have made ourselves available. O oh, the church, epiphany in the time of the eternal, new Jerusalem toward which our steps joyfully hasten. Yet the church suffers. Remember the day you said yes to God in the priesthood and the day you repeated and brought to the sacramental fullness that yes in the episcopate. So renew those yeses, either by weeping bitterly like Peter over your betrayals and changing your life, or by retiring to private life and calling for a new conclave. The present and future of each of us is in the hands of God, who is, as the saintly father Leopold Mondik used to repeat, doctor in medicine. We therefore entrust ourselves to him in a spirit of filial, trusting, total abandonment. I'm not asking you to listen to me, but to listen to what in your conscience may suggest to you, if you will read them, these fraternal, frank, and priestly words of mine. Cordially, Father Frank Floriano Pellegrini, Father Pellegrini is a priest of Italy. He's been a thorn in the side of the bishops for some time there. And I can't imagine this goes without being, a, this goes unpunished. He is only four years from retirement. Perhaps because of his popularity with the laity, they will not punish him severely, but just command him to silence. There are some priests that, if you, if you, that come to mind here in the United States who spoke too forcefully against the system and against the modernist problem in the church in America and the, in the hierarchy broadly and have been silenced by their bishops, largely because of many decades of service. And so they just silenced them from teaching, speaking publicly again. I expect we will get news that this has happened to, to Father Floriano Pellegrini. Whether he chooses to submit to that when it happens will be up to him. And that remains to be seen, of course. Do you agree with his letter? Francis should resign. I'm sure most of you agree with that. But about the the charges he levels against him, they give against you know the charges of him, of him holding to the stone cutter ideology, to teaching their ideas, to his evil alliances with the powers of the world, especially in the last three years when everything just became so clear for people that there really is true evil in the world and it occupies positions of power over us. Let me know if you agree with him. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. As does sharing this on social media, that helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.